Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to create a level select screen that includes smooth animated buttons. I'll show you how we can customize the animation of a button to fit your game and ensure we can quickly configure each button to take us to the level we want it to go. You can find the full project files for this video, including all scripts, assets and scenes embedded into one package on my Patreon link down below. Now let's get started. So in the scene, all I have is a main camera. And if I go to my scenes folder here, I have four levels in my game. And if I select each one, you can see there is nothing in these scenes. It simply tells us what level we're in for the sake of the video. So what we're going to do first is set up the functionality for one button and make sure that when we select this button, it takes us to a level. And then from there, we can make this button be animated as we hover over it. And then we can duplicate that button to make a number of separate level buttons. Now, the only other asset I'm going to be using for this video is this square I've made here. And again, this square and these scenes are part of the package you can download from my Patreon. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click in my hierarchy, go to UI, Legacy, and then button. Now you may not have this legacy depending on the Unity version you're using. I'm using a fairly recent one where they recommend more to use Text Mesh Pro. But if you're using an older version, you may not have that. So let's just use the normal button for now. And we can just call this level one. Now if we go to our scene tab and press F, zoom out a little bit, and now we can configure our button just a little bit. So we're gonna make our button look a little bit nicer. A bit later on, let's first focus on the functionality of getting our button to take us to a scene. So on our newly created canvas, let's set the scale mode to scale with screen size. And then with our button selected, let's just zero it out on both axes. And then if we open the drop down, we can change the text to level one. And we can also just rename the text button text. So now we can press play and our button is selectable, but obviously we have set up no functionality. We're gonna create one script that we can place on every button. And for each button, we can simply change the level that we want that button to take us to. So on our button here, let's scroll down, press add component, and then we can just type in level select button. Create an ad and then let's open this up. So when working with scenes, we need to use the scene management namespace. So at the top, let's do it using unity engine dot scene management. So now we need to make a new method. So let's do public void change scene. So this is where we want to change our scene. So we're going to do scene manager dot load scene. And now you can see it's looking for a scene name. Now, when we're just working with one button in a scene, you could simply pass in the string that's looking for, which is the scene name. So for example, I could just do level one and that would be fine. But the issue we have is that with a level select screen, there's obviously multiple levels. So we don't want to create a new script for every button. What we're going to do, we're going to make a public string and we're going to call this level name. Instead of this string, we can pass in our level name. So back in Unity, you can see on our button now, we have this string value here where we can type in anything we want. So what we want to type in here is the name of my first level, which is level one with a capital L. So I can just go down here, type in level one, and that's absolutely fine. But this on its own is not going to do anything. We actually need to call this method. And this is where our on click function comes in. So on our button component, let's go down to on click and press this plus sign. And then we can simply drag in this script and then go down to our level select button and change the function to change scene. But you can see if we press play here and we try to run this, I press this and I get an error down below and you can see it says scene level one couldn't be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings. So that is what we need to do next. So for every scene or level in your game, they need to be added to the build settings and you can find that going to file and then build settings. This is where you adjust a lot of important aspects of your game. In our case, what we need is scenes in build. For all of my four levels, I'm gonna select all of them and just drag them in here. Let's try that again. And when I press this button, I'm taken to my level one. So now that we know that our button works, we can actually make it a little bit more appealing. And I'm gonna do this in a specific way because I wanna make our button easily customizable via animations. So let's go to our level one. And first things first, we're gonna make it a square. I'm gonna change the width and the height to 120. And then I'm actually gonna remove our image component here. It's given us an error. You must have a graphic target in order to use a color transition. Well, this is where we're gonna switch this. So let's go to our transition, go from color tint to animation because what we want to do is create animations for our button so that when we, for example, hover over it, an animation is going to play and it's going to change the look of our button. And then when we move away, it will revert back to its normal position. And this is going to give us a really cool dynamic look to our buttons. So on our button, let's right click, go to UI and then image. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass in this square that we've got here. Again, this is up to you. And then you can see our square is just a little bit smaller than what it should be. So I'm going to set it to match our button size, which is 120. And then our button text, I'm just gonna change this from level one to one. And then let's just increase that font size. And then we can just change the color to white. And we can even add a nice little shadow to our number here and do the same to our square. And now we have something that's just a little bit more professional. Again, the customization I'm doing now is optional and it's completely up to you. But finally, I'm gonna right click one more time, go to image, and then we're just gonna call this background. And while we're here, let's rename our square to outline. So on our square, let's choose a sprite and I'm just gonna use a basic square that just comes as part of any Unity project. So let's resize our square so it is the full size of our gap. So we can just do 110. And then I'm gonna change the color to black. 
Now we're going to talk about an important topic in UI and that is how it is rendered. So UI objects are rendered in front of each other based on the order in the hierarchy. So the lower down it is, the more objects it's rendered in front of. So our background object here is being rendered in front of both our outline and our text. This does seem counterintuitive at points. So if you ever get frustrated about this, I feel your pain. I want our background object to be rendered at the back of our button and then the text and then the outline. So what we can do is drag our background object to the top. So it's just underneath the main button. And then to minimize the number of individual objects I'm going to animate, I'm going to parent my outline sprite to our background. Otherwise, we would have to animate all three objects when we create this animation shortly. So I don't want to animate my text object. So I'm leaving that outside of this parenting. Finally, I'm going to go to my background image. I'm going to select the color and set the alpha to zero. And just like that, if we go to our game tab, we have a nice little button here. So now it's time to create some animations for our button. On our button component, you can see we have a bunch of triggers. So we're gonna set these up after we make some animations. These triggers are triggered depending on if the mouse cursor is hovering over the button, if the button is selected or we're moving away from the button. So I'm gonna to go to the animation tab and I'm gonna press create. And we can just call this button highlighted. And then from here, I'm gonna start recording our animation. I'm gonna to go to about 15 frames in. And then with our background object selected, I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees. And then with our background object selected, Let's grab the alpha channel and I'm going to set it to something like 60. When our player hovers over our button, it will look like this. So now what we need to do is make another animation going back to the button's normal state. I'm going to drag and select all of our animation frames here and I'm just going to control C. And now we can press this drop down, press create new clip and then I can just call this button normal. Press record and then just control V to paste our frames back in. And then we can just swap them around. So if I grab these ones, put them 10 frames in and then grab our ones at the end and place them at the start. So you can see now our button starts highlighted and then we'll end back in its normal state. And then we'll end back in its normal state. In our project folder, let's select both of our animations and just disable loop time on both. But we're not done yet. We need to go into our animator window now and set up the triggers. Because like I mentioned, these triggers are actually strings that we need to reference. So let's go to window, animation, and then animator. And you can see we have these two states here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set our default state from entry to normal. And then I'm gonna right click and make a transition to highlighted. And in this state, I'm gonna disable exit time and I'm gonna set transition duration to 0.1. And then we're gonna to go to parameters at the top of our animator tab and we need to create a trigger. So because we're going to highlighted, we need to find the highlighted trigger, which is highlighted with a capital H. Click this plus sign, press trigger, and then type in the exact same. And then on our animation transition, let's just add a condition that being highlighted. So now let's do the same going back to our normal. But now we need to make a trigger for normal. So let's go parameters, trigger, and then normal, and then add that trigger here. And don't forget to disable exit time and set our transition duration to 0.1. And now you can see when we press play, when my mouse is not on the button, it's behaving as it should, but when I hover over it, our animation plays. And we have some nice visual feedback to the player that we are hovering over the button. And when we move away, it disappears. And we can do this continuously and it's nice and smooth every time. So before we start making an actual level select screen with multiple buttons, I'm gonna add a little bit of polish just to make each button look that little bit better. So at the moment, if we press play, you can see the minute it starts, it kind of starts off in that triangle state and you can see it very quickly goes to its normal state. And that's because in our animator component, you can see it goes from entry straight to normal. So that means it starts off in that triangle state because that is how our normal animation starts. So to fix this, we can simply just right click, press create state and then empty and we can just call this start. And then we can change our default state to this start. And then we can make a transition from start to highlighted, disable exit time, set transition duration to 0.1 and then use the highlighted trigger. So now when we press play, you can see we don't start off in any animation, it's just nice and normal, and then we can just hover and move away as we normally would. So I wanna make one more animation for when the button is pressed, because at the moment, if we press it, there is no visual feedback. So reselect your button, create new clip, and then we're just gonna call this button pressed. And then what we wanna do, go to your highlighted animation, and I'm just gonna copy our end frames, go back to your pressed, and then paste those in. Because we want our animation to start in our highlighted state, and then we can go to something like two frames in and I'm going to go to my background object and just increase the alpha to something like 120. Again, go to your project, go to your pressed animation, make sure the loop time for this button pressed is disabled. And then we need to configure this last state in our animator tab. So from our highlighted state, let's right click and make a transition. And you can see when it's pressed, we need this string. So let's make a new trigger, call it pressed, disable exit time, 0.1 transition duration, and then the pressed condition. And then to cover all scenarios, let's make a transition from button pressed to button normal. In the case that the player presses a button like here, but then moves away from the button and then lets go. On this transition, same settings as before, 
then let's set the condition to normal. Now the last thing we're gonna do before we test this out, on my button, I'm gonna set the navigation from automatic to none. And doing this means going from button selected and other various states, just a little bit cleaner and a little bit more to the norm of what you would typically see in a game. So now let's go and test this out. You can see the button is in a normal state right now. I can hover over it and it's highlighted. I can move away and it goes back to normal. I can then hover over it and press and you can see it gets darker, but I can also move away and let go and it goes back to normal. And now we have a constant set of states and I can select this and go to our level one. So with all the hard work out of the way, we can now start duplicating our buttons. So let's go to our level one here and I can just press control D to duplicate this and call it level two. And then I'm gonna make two more copies of this and just call this level three and four. So now with our four buttons made, we wanna spread these out evenly across our canvas. And we can use something known as a grid layout group to do this. Now alternatively, you can just do this manually, but a quicker way to do this that I like to use is called a grid layout group. So on your canvas, press add component and type in grid layout group. And you can see our buttons are now in a bit of a weird state, but we can configure this. So firstly, let's go to child alignment and change it from upper left to middle center. And then I'm going to add some nice spacing in between each. Let's go on the X axis of our spacing and just drag out here. And you can add some further adjustments to move your buttons using padding. So if I wanted to move them higher or lower, I could use this. Now, one other thing you may notice is that we can't actually see our text. So on our cell size on the Y, so let's set this to something like 115. So I'm going to distribute about 150 worth space on each. And then finally, let's just change the number of each button here. But we're not quite done yet. The last thing we need to do is change the level that we're going to on each button. So I'm just gonna change each of these to the correct scene name. And now with that done, it's finally time to give this a test. So you can see right here, I have four buttons and I can hover over each one and we get this really cool dynamic effect. If I wanted to go to level four, I can select this and we go to level four. And same goes for every other one. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Everything you've just seen in this video is available as one single package from my Patreon, which can be found down below. But apart from that guys, I'll thank you all very much for watching today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.